Well, thank you so much, Shania, for uh, sitting down with us. It's a pleasure to meet you, first of all. I've been a fan for a long time. Thank so you. fans are uh, obviously ecstatic that you're back. But I want you to take us back to the moment where you told your husband or told your son, you know what, I'm not quite ready to hang up my hat just yet. Like, what, what was that moment? To be honest, it was really more my family that was encouraging me to um, to not hang up my hat, and uh, I, I would never, I don't think I will ever give up being involved in music or mm -hmm. creativity or, or you know music uh, music creativity for sure. Um, but there was a time when I was sure that I wouldn't sing again. I really was quite sure I was going to have to accept that I wouldn't mm -hmm. get my voice back. Um, after you know some side effects from Lyme's disease, but they encouraged me to try and try again yeah. and not give up on that. And uh, so it was really more the support around me that uh, than, than you saying, "Yes, I'm going to do this." Yes, I remember being at your farewell con farewell concert uh, in Montreal. Interesting enough, you're going to be back in Montreal almost three years to the date. Your concert was uh, June 28th. You're going to be in Quebec City on June 28th and Montreal June 26th. So it's funny, it's exactly three years wow, yeah. to the day. Uh, and I remember I went with my girlfriend. I just had a baby, so you were like my first night out uh, with my girlfriend. And I said, I can't be, this can't be, um, this can't be her farewell. It, 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 you just seemed to have to be so you were so good you were so energetic and still had so much more to give so did you have that feeling like during the tour that well i didn't want to take anything for granted and i i felt that i had to be honest with myself mm -hmm. i knew that um it was already uh incredible that i was able to do a residency um concert scenario where you know, I wasn't traveling and I wasn't getting, you know, the fatigue of the travel and everything. And it was a very controlled environment at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. And so that was one thing to achieve, which was already a great thing to achieve considering that I'd had so many problems with my boys. But, I mean, that room is, is it makes it a lot easier. Not exactly the challenges that yeah. a tour, you know, places on you. So I thought, okay, I don't want to give up till I do another tour. But I have to accept that that's probably it. Mm. You know, once I add on the traveling and I add on all of the rigors of, of touring, I'll be pushing myself to the max. Because yeah. um, my warm-ups alone are an hour, hour and a half. So I just thought I'm going to do it, but it's a challenge that I, I, I'm not going to uh, take for granted that I'll be able to do mm. this forever anymore. Mm. So I thought that was just being honest with myself and, um, but you know what, it went, so it went, it just went better than I expected. Yeah, obviously, fans are loving it. It went better than I expected, so I was pleasantly surprised. Fans hope and wish that an artist will give them sort of a glimpse into their life, right? We all want to know what that person that they admire is thinking, is feeling. And instead of giving us a glimpse, you've literally, you've opened the door, you've said, come in, I'm giving you all of myself, and that's what you've done with now. Were you afraid uh, uh, of, of doing that? How did you feel about putting yourself out there as you did? Because I've, I've heard all your albums before, and I have to say, this is the one where you, you laid it all out, out there. I'm just at a point in my life where I'm less guarded about sharing things that I feel are important to share. Um, and that I think that I, that I would appreciate others sharing with me things that, that would help me see through difficult times or to find inner courage or if you're going mm. through a time of self-doubt that I would want to hear from somebody else mm. from their own experience. So it's really more me sharing my experience with others knowing I'm not the only one in the world to go through these things and that, that there are many people out there that um, might even be looking to me for encouragement. You know, there's a lot of people that have said to me over the years, you know, man, I feel like a woman means this. Um, you know, it's really made me feel uh, more confident as a woman, or it's made me feel more confident oh, as... my man, I feel like a woman. There you, go. <laughs> you know, or it makes me feel more confident as, as, as a gay man, or um, it's made, you know, heterosexual men feel more relaxed about um, 
singing along with their wives and not, you know, like everybody sort of joined into the spirit of, uh, of the purpose of the song. Man, I feel like a woman. Um, and then there's other songs, uh, you know, uh, like From This Moment On, um, or You're Still the One, they're love songs, but they're, they're, about, they're about a positive, uh, you know, life is getting better because, you know, we're, we're, we're a unit. Mm -hmm. And I think we need we need each other. So I just whether it's you know man woman um, sisters or friends or complete strangers like myself and you know a lot of people out there that listen to my music that I I may never meet we can still have this connection of sharing yeah. and that is where I feel I can make a difference and and make a connection through honesty and transparency and sharing my experiences. So. It's more about that. It's not about um, anything else. I mean, it's not about. I, I'm I'm am I'm, I'm a very discreet person in a lot of ways. There's things that, of course, I would never share. I'm still a very private person. But there's just some things that are more valuable that you've experienced. They're more valuable when you share them yeah. than if you keep them to yourself. I was listening to uh, the album and uh, swinging with my eyes closed. If I didn't know that I was listening to, to the new album, that split second when it starts, I had to look back down. I said, am I listening to any man of mine? It was cool. Do okay. you get what I'm saying? That yeah. first melody. Yeah. Uh, was that done on purpose? Like, were you looking to bring some of the uh, classic Shania, if I can say, to the new album? Well, that one does definitely does have like a, um, an essence of, yes. of, of that. Like, I mean, what is classic Shania? So this is a really good point. Man, that's classic Shania. <laughs> right, but then, you know, if you, depending on who you ask, you know, what yeah. is classic Shania? It might be any man of mine, or it might be uh, Man, I Feel Like a Woman. They're totally different songs, totally different genres even in, mm. in, the, in their own right. That don't impress me. Some people think of that don't impress me much. What's, what's typical Shania? That don't impress me much. Well, that's a whole other thing again. Or some people might say you're still the one. Um, so I don't really even know myself what classic Shania is, and I think it depends. I think that's in the hands of the listener and, and the fan, and, and it means something to um, different people, to different sexes, to different age, you know, different genre, uh, genders, different um, ages. Yeah. So the new album um, does have a lot of diversity. And Swinging With My Eyes Closed is probably, yeah, one of the ones that reflects more of yeah. any man of mine. And although it's um, got that reggae summery feel, and um, that'll be my summer song this summer. Yeah, it's my, it's my song right now. Oh, it's, great. I've been playing it over. Yeah, and I'll do it on tour because it's just such a perfect summer song. I'm swinging with my eyes closed. You know, for women who, you're, you're an inspiration because, you know, women, you know, and especially in, in the public eye, you know, I'm, I'm not in the public eye as you are, but I work in the TV industry and, yeah. you know, when women have a baby, let's say, uh, in our industry and we have to take time off to be with the baby, I took a year off to be with my daughter, it's an easy decision, of course, to be with your child, but it's also right. a scary decision because you're just wondering if you're going to be accepted back. And I think yeah. of you and I said, wow, no album in 15 years, and then you come back. Like she can do it, I can yes. do it. Yes, and you know what? And that's what that's what you tell me. Oh, that's, I like yeah. hearing that. I think it is very important to um, stick with your plan. Yeah. And not compromise your plan mm. um, for the sake of what, or for for the sake of fear. Fear, you got to get rid of that. So see, you, you you did say that in there, and I think it's very important to acknowledge that. We shouldn't change our plans over fear. We shouldn't compromise uh, our vision over fear. Yeah. That you got to just get rid of fear. And um, I think you know, look, women are sensible creatures. You know, we we're sensible. We're pragmatic. We're we're um, uh, we're very capable of making uh, career decisions, life decisions, um, and. 
we, we know how to weigh things up and we're really good at balancing things. I mean, look at all the hats we wear these days, especially. I mean, I wear way more hats than my mother and my grandmother wore in their life, um, just because the way the world is today. And it, there's pros and cons to that. Uh, and one of the cons can be letting fear and self-doubt creep in and say to you, you know, oh, well, well if, if I take a break, yeah. then, you know. But listen, you know what? Parenting is not taking a break. That is not taking a break. Parenting is <laughs> such a hard job. And we learn so much through all the different things that we do in our lives that, and I think we apply all of these other things that we do in our domestic lives, for example, to our professional lives. I think we're better at our professions because yeah. we, are, we are so diverse. Yeah, it's very true. I want to end on a high note because this weekend you're performing for at the Grey Cup, of yes. course, and then next year is the tour. Is this sort of like the Grey Cup going to be your first big, you know, stadium show since you, you went on, on, on the little break since the farewell tour? Is this going to be your first uh, sort of big show? This will be my first... Uh, I mean, that's a very good point. I was in London um, yeah. very recently, and I did a huge concert there. Okay. Um, but this is definitely my first uh, sporting event of, you know, an event. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to treat it like an event. How so I'm feel? very excited yeah. about it. And um, just very, I won't tell you about what we're doing, but it's, it's just very exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm prepared, you know, for the cold. I'm, it's true, I, know I didn't I, even think I, of I that. Know, I'm, I know what I'm walking into, I'm prepared. Uh, I'm from the north, no problem. I'm not, yeah. that doesn't scare me. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm ready and looking forward to it. I'm excited, you know, it's a, it'll be a great reunion with Canadians. And, um, you know, I love sport, and uh, I'll be there with bells on. Yeah, not literally. Yeah, not literally. I could wear bells because you love the holidays. So yeah, I you could can. wear bells. We're <laughs> heading into that. That might interfere with the sound a little Perfect. bit. Perfect. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to watch the performance, and I'll be watching you uh, next year for sure at the Bell Center. Three years to the date almost that I saw you last time in concert. So I'm so happy that that was not your last tour. And you'll so be able to sing along with Swing. Yes, yeah, so and maybe I'll even bring my daughter. Who knows? We'll see. Oh, yes. yeah. Just wait. bring earplugs for her. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you.